It's Monday. I'm on the floor again. So I did this booktubing from the floor thing last week and you guys seem to be into it. So many of you said that you also watch my videos from this position. So finally, we're like the same orientation, sexual orientation, maybe, but also spatial orientation. Um, yeah, it's cozy. I like it. We're all in it together. And maybe this will be my thing now. Mediocre Mondays. So I thought a good video to film in this position would be the try a chapter tag. I have an absolutely enormous pile of books here. This is almost my entire TBR. I've left a few on the trolley that I'm like 100% sure I'm going to read, I'm going to love, but I picked up basically everything else. Like, are we gonna go all through these? I don't know, I'm gonna keep going until I get bored and I'm gonna read the first chapter and decide whether or not to keep it. I thought it would be a useful little on haul experiment. I think let's literally just dive in. So uh, what have I got here? Book number one. This is The Dead Girls by Jorge Ibarguen Goitia. This is one, I've showed you guys this before. I have hauled and unhauled this book like three times. This is I think the third time it has come into my possession. I didn't buy it any of the times. I'm not just completely out of control um but i've acquired it from various places and then twice before decided i don't have room for it in my life i don't have the energy for it but um it actually sounds really good so i got it again <laughs> so let's read the first chapter all right in we go the dead girls oh by the way this is based on a true story about two sisters who are running a brothel and also murdering people like a pretty horrific true crime story uh, but this is a fictional version that's apparently a comedy, interestingly enough. Where does this bloody chapter start? Okay. Okay. Um, not sure what to make of that. So that first chapter, we were introduced to a few characters uh, and ends with them going and setting fire to a bakery. We don't know why, we don't know who these people are. It wasn't like the most engaging first chapter of the whole world, but I should have mentioned at the beginning of this, I hate starting books. So <laughs> this video is basically gonna be torture for me because I basically always hate the first chapter because I'm like, who are these people? Why am I here? Um, sometimes a book can defy that by having like a super immersive first chapter. This one is just like a regular first chapter, but I, um, you know, I'm interested in reading the rest of the book. So that one is not for the unhaul pile. It'll go back on the trolls. I'm sorry for saying trolls. I really, really, truly am. Right, what's next in this great experiment? Where's the bloody pile? Oreo, okay, by Fran Ross. This is one I'm kind of nervous about. I think it's gonna be too clever for me. It's like a satire. Um, it's sort of a retelling of the minotaur story is that right um i think i'm just like not gonna get it but i am willing to give it a go <laughs> sometimes when your brain just like reads a word completely wrong <laughs> i was just calling this person in my head i was calling her honichile <laughs> Honey child. <laughs> okay. Whew. You know what? I already love this. It looks like this. This page I'm on looks like this. Can you see? It has like little illustrations, a little graph. I think this is gonna be fun. <laughs> it's funny. I can't believe I didn't do this before I did the five star predictions video. I'm already putting this in my five star predictions. Fantastic. Going on the trolley. Uh, so far we've just met some of the characters and like they're going back in the generations. So we have a black woman and a Jewish man getting married and both of their parents on each side being like not happy about that. Um, but it's all just told in this very like fast, matter of fact, very funny way. I'm into it. Alrighty, chapter number three. Oh, this is Girl in Snow. Okay, so this is going to be a mystery novel. 
uh, about a high school student who is found murdered and it's like told from three people left behind who are very interested. I'm holding the books here thinking that that points at the camera but it doesn't. I need to hold them here. This is Girl in Snow. I'm so sorry if you haven't seen any of the previous covers I've been talking about. This chapter begins day one, Wednesday, February 16th, 2005. Oh, that's some small writing. Oh, okay, that was a good first chapter. So yeah, like I said, a high school student has been found dead. And I think we're going to meet a few different characters and like hear a few different perspectives. This was just from this boy Cameron, who it's unclear what relationship he actually had with Lucinda, but he was kind of obsessed with her because he has all these drawings of her. Um, and there's just like a lot about him that I'm intrigued by. He has this kind of obsession with um, like the gun that his mom has under her bed and he like knows all these facts about guns like he might be quite um have like quite an obsessive personality maybe and right at the end of the chapter he's at school and a police officer comes in and is like we need to talk to you end of chapter so yeah definitely intrigued I'm not doing very well at unhauling so far am i hummingbird by tristan hughes okay so this one i got from mr b's bookshop i did this absolutely amazing experience that i've told you about before um the mr b's book spa I think it's called where you go and like have coffee and tea and brownies with a bookseller and you chat to them for ages about your reading taste and then they recommend you a bunch of books and I just did the abbreviated version because I did it for a video um and I ended up buying four books five books four books five books um I like if you had the full experience you have a voucher and then that covers the cost of some books they recommend you like a massive stack and then you can get some of the books um i just did like as i said the little abbreviated version they just like let me do it for free i ended up buying some books and unfortunately i haven't got on super well with any of them yet um but like just to be clear i did have the abbreviated version i really want to go and actually like pay for the experience um because i think it would be amazing so it's obviously like a particularly hard challenge for them to recommend me books when we only had a very short chat um, but this is the last one I have left I haven't read yet, so I'm like really fingers crossed this one's going to be a winner. It's not that I haven't liked the other books that they recommended, it's just that none of them were like absolute wins for me so far. So I'm hoping that this one's going to be that win. This is going to be five stars. I uh, can't bother to read what it's about, let's just read the first chapter. Feel like I would struggle to get into uh, but I also like want to keep this one because it's the last one from the Mr. B's collection and I just like really want to give that a full chance so I'm gonna put this one into my like maybe pile nothing in that first chapter really enchanted me but you know first chapters never do except for that one that I said I was gonna give five stars Oreo that one really did oh okay this is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent this is it this is about a woman condemned to death for murdering her lover. Uh, it's based on a true story of the last woman to be executed in Iceland. I kind of have this one as like a sort of experiment. Historical fiction is a genre that I've always said I don't like, um, but recently I'm discovering that that's a very sweeping statement to make. Um, so I'm kind of experimenting with different types of historical fiction that I might enjoy. This is useful. A note on Icelandic pronunciation. A with a dash is pronounced ow, like owl. O with the dot dots is er, uh, as in fleur. This one doesn't help me. It says AU is pronounced as in the French, and then I don't know how to pronounce that French word. O E I L? Oil? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we got a nice little map here. The first chapter is just this long, it's just a prologue. Uh, how long is the chapter after that? Oh my god, so long. There. Okay. Um, so the chapter is pretty long, but it's divided up into, like, little bits. So, you know what? I'm just gonna start with the prologue and keep going until I get bored. Melodia, just need to find my way. Mm. Okay, so this is one of those chapters where we're just meeting a lot of people 
or with quite difficult to keep track of names, just while I get used to it. Um, like Icelandic names follow quite a different format. Like the surname is named after their. Excuse me. Oh, it's my sister. Hi, sister. Okay, where was I? I was telling you that in Iceland, the surnames, people are named like Johnson if they're John's son, or John's daughter if they're John's daughter. So it's like quite hard to keep track of who everyone is and who's related to who. So anyway, um, I like the premise of this book, but I'm gonna put it in my little maybe pile. Okay, next one I think is also going to be a Hannah Kent book. Correct, so this is The Good People. So this is another historical fiction. This one's in Ireland. Um, again, I really liked the premise. This is it. Uh, it's about a woman who is accused of killing... That's not right. Yeah. Um, something about a woman who thinks that her little boy, her grandson, is a changeling. Or other people think he's a changeling. Something about a changeling. Oh, it's very um, textured, this cover. My mum would hate this. It feels a bit weird, but I quite like it. Stuck in the night with no I kind of forgot that I'd switched books from the one set in Iceland to the one set in Ireland. I was just thinking, like, it's so funny. So many of these Icelandic names sound so similar to Irish names, but we're not in Iceland anymore. <laughs> I'm putting that one on the maybe unhaul pile as well. That may just not be my genre of historical fiction. If I drink this without sitting up, will it go all over me? Yes, it will. Ooh, that cool control. Okay, next up, oh, we have a proof. Magma by Thora Holif's daughter. What did I tell you? Is this Icelandic? I believe it is. So this is, it sounds really good. It's about a young woman trapped in like a toxic relationship but kind of like the slow almost like imperceptible ways that this guy is being really emotionally abusive oh it's like a super short first chapter it's just one page i'm gonna read the next chapter which i think is also just one page and chapter three Stuck in God, they, they keep going. I think maybe it's just gonna be super short the whole way through. It is! Okay, I should stop. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna like that one. It's already just like, this guy's a creep. Number, whatever we are. Oh, it's a big one. It's a chunky one. Oh, this is The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. Um, I mean, I think I definitely am gonna read this. One of my colleagues read it and she said it was weird. Did she say it was good weird or just weird weird? Don't remember. Let's get you out of the way. Oh, it's yellow. What a delight. She's a Mona Lisa. Oh yeah, I remember this. My colleague said that one of the perspectives we hear from is the perspective of the cat. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's planning up to see her. This is creepy. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this one. I realise I don't know what it's about. You think you know what's inside the last house on Needless Street. You think you've read this story before. In the dark forest at the end of Needless Street, something lies buried, but it's not what you think. What is this about? <laughs> I have no idea, but I'm gonna read it. Night Shift by Chiara Ladner. This is about a woman who gets obsessed with another woman and she works a night shift. Unexpectedly orange end papers. You see her walking down the boulevard. She got the okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'll read that. That chapter was like straight into Maggie meeting Sabine. Um, with like being told in hindsight that we know she's completely obsessed with her. Love obsession. Where did that dust jacket go? How are we doing? Oh my god, there's still so many more. Kololo Hill. You know what, this one I just definitely know that I want to read. Being shallow, it's because it's so pretty. And look, it's also yellow. It's also yellow, so that's another beautiful yellow book, but also, ah, look at that. Oh my God. For shallow reasons alone, <laughs> I'm keeping this one. And also because I'm getting tired. 
Uh, this is Brood. Um, this one I'm really intrigued by. I don't know if it'll be my thing. Um, it's got chickens on the cover. So that's cute. It's about a woman who gets four chickens and tries to keep them alive for a year. But it's also about grief. I think possibly about miscarriage. Maybe not about miscarriage. It doesn't say that. I don't know where I got that from. About motherhood, marriage, and grief is what it says. It's a very griefy, naked cover. Very beautiful and grey and griefy. Um, so that probably sounds amazing. But maybe as somebody who isn't a mother and isn't at that stage in life, it's probably like not aimed for me. But let's see. And Sherry likes that. I like the way that's written. I think I'm gonna get on just fine with that one. Okay, how are we doing? Just four more. And they are four that I am unsure about, so I guess it's worth continuing this little experiment that we've got going here. This is From the Wreck by Jane Rawson. This is a genre-bending novel that I think is going to be like historical fiction meets sci-fi, two genres that I do not get on with very well. Um, but Simon Savage is quoted on the front here as having loved this one. And you know what? It just sounds intriguing. La la la. What do I have to say to keep you back? By my side, how to start in a liquefy. Hmm. Very mysterious. Uh yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep that one. We're beginning with a shipwreck. Uh and I think it's like ghostly. There's like a creepy woman on the boat. What does this say? So in 1859, George Hills is pulled from the wreck of the steamship Admela. So I just read the wreck. Um, but this like mysterious woman. Uh, saves him? A familiar presence has been watching him ever since. What might this creature want from him? His life? His firstborn? Simply to return to its home? And he will be called back to the ocean. Yeah, okay. Ghostly Titanic. I tried reading that book once that was literally Ghostly Titanic and it wasn't very good, so maybe this will fill that void. Then we have Mountain Road Late at Night. This sounds like a very sad story about I think it's all set over a few days. Let's check. Um, a couple are killed in a car accident, uh, leaving a four-year-old son behind. And yeah, it's like a few days as all of the relatives come to the family home to grieve. Sad. Sadness. Is there going to be anything hopeful and happy in there? This first chapter seems to be a million pages long. <laughs> um, does it even have chapters? This is just still going. Oh, I see. It's in like parts. The first part is 67 pages long. So I'm obviously not going to read that right now. Let's just read, let's say, 10 pages. Yeah, I'm going to like this. I think this is going to be one of those books where you just really get inside people's heads and nothing really happens. You just get to spend some time being inside characters' brains and really believing that they exist, which honestly is what I read books for. Two to go, and then I can have some food. Okay, this is Shuggy Bing. This is chunky. I didn't register how big this book is. Um, this won the Booker Prize. I'm scared of books that win the Booker Prize because I always think they're going to be like too clever for me. This one I'm also scared of because I think it's going to be very, very sad. It's about a boy growing up in Glasgow with an alcoholic mother and he's gay and it's the 80s uh, and I think he just has like a rubbish time. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Then again, I loved A Little Life. So sometimes I just love a really sad book. I wish I could do a Scottish accent. I feel like I should be reading this in a Scottish accent in my head. Know that you're coming back home. Know that you're coming back home. I can already tell this is going to be very bleak. But realistically, I'm going to read it on time. I'm so tired. Okay, I have one more to go. This one, Sex, Robots and Vegan Meat, is a non-fiction book. And really, I just got it for the title... Um, it's about four things, uh, birth, food, sex, and death. So it's about like inventions or like advances in those four areas that make us question what it means to be human. Super, super interesting premise, but here's the thing. Often when I read nonfiction books, I really love them at first. So probably I'm going to love the first chapter, 
but a few chapters in i'm like you know what this could have been an email i don't have the patience or attention span usually to read a whole non-fiction book maybe i should get it as an audio book i feel like it's it works better listening to non-fiction sometimes it's kind of like the podcast effect that's not chapter one that's the preface this is chapter one having my own conversations Yeah, you know what? Read it to me. This was one um, that is published by Pam Millen, where I work. So I got this one from the office, and I can very easily send it back into the office, um, and then at a later date, get an audiobook of this one. Because I think it'll be very, very interesting, but there is no point in me hanging on to this book when I know that I just... I'm not the right kind of reader to read this many pages of nonfiction. I know that that makes me a lazy person who has no interest in learning, but I'm tired. I've been doing this for so long. So, final decisions on what to unhaul. Let's set up, I think, now. Oh, hello. Look at me being actually upright. Not so mediocre now, am I? So, I've got four books that I just put on my maybe unhaul pile. And to be honest, I'm going to rescue this one, Hummingbird, just because... I loved that experience at Mr. B's and I want this one to be my like final shot at that. But I already told you I'm definitely unholding this one. These two I think are probably amazing historical fiction books, but they just didn't grip me from the beginning. And in a world where I have so many books to read, maybe these just aren't like my books. So that's three unhauls and all of these can actually go back to the office at Pam Millen. Uh, where they will be very useful to all the people not in the office right now because we're all working from home but future emma will use these once i'm back um ta-da that's three books down off my tbr trolley when i film balancing the books in a few days i will be thrilled at that so thanks for hanging out with me here on mediocre monday i hope you all have a very not mediocre monday a fantastic monday and the rest of your week and i will see you on friday I know that you're coming back home